So the Zelensky regime has been talking about uh, negotiating with Russia and saying that the only way that they would negotiate is if uh, a return of the Donbass and Crimea were on the table. That is, they are not going to negotiate with Russia unless Russia is willing to remove its troops from all Ukrainian territory and return to Ukraine, to the Zelensky regime, really, Crimea and the Donbass and Mariupol and every single bit of land that currently has Russian troops. It, it's insane, but of course it's not insane. It's basically a signal that there isn't going to be any kind of negotiation. The Zelensky regime refuses to negotiate with the Russians. They have no intention of having any sort of ceasefire. Now, this is deeply troubling because if you look at any map of the current state of conflict, it's very clear that the Russians are winning and they're winning decisively. They're winning decisively and they are at the doorstep of taking out a huge number of Ukrainian soldiers. Young men who will be, if they are lucky, taken as prisoners of war, if they're not so lucky, severely injured, and if they're truly unlucky, they will die. And they will die for nothing, because the outcome is inevitable. There is an inevitability to this war. And the fact that all of a sudden in the United States, this uh, abortion issue has come to the front burner out of the blue with this uh, quote-unquote leaked opinion from the Supreme Court, which I, I don't think it was leaked, I think it was a very deliberate attempt to distract the conversation from the Ukraine war because it's clear that the outcome is inevitable and the United States will not increase its participation in this war. They'll throw money at the problem, they'll throw weapons at the problem, but they're not going to put troops on the ground. They're not going to put aircraft, American aircraft, over the skies of Ukraine for the very, very simple reason that they know, not think, know, that if they put aircraft over Ukraine, the Russians will blow those aircraft out of the sky. The Russians have complete military supremacy over the territory of Ukraine. That is a fact. And anybody who knows even a little bit, you don't even have to be a specialist, but just a little bit of common sense can tell you that. And so these so-called negotiation points that Zelensky has floated out there, they're not for negotiation. They're just for a continuation of a war that the Russians will inevitably win. So you have to ask yourself, why is Zelensky doing this? And the answer is very obvious. He's trying to buy time for himself, for himself and the right-wing neo-fascist cronies around him, all the crazies that he's got in his administration, because they are crazy. They are neo-Nazis. And don't give me stuff that they're not, because they are. And they've said so. And, you know, five minutes watching a guy like Arestovich talking on a YouTube video, and you know he's insane. You know that he is typical of the people in the Zelensky regime. They are going to fight to the last Ukrainian. That's the bargain that they have struck with Washington. Because Washington has this idiotic notion that the Ukraine conflict will somehow weaken Russia. They do not seem to understand Russians at all or the Russian situation at all. This conflict, far from weakening Russia, has made it much stronger, much more self-confident, much more aware of its true power. And it has unified the Russian people as, frankly, nothing else could have. And the fact that the West has gone out of its way with these ridiculous sanctions to punish the Russian people, because sanctions only punish the people. Well, what's happened is that the Russian people, in the face of these punishments, have turned to their government, have turned to Putin, and they support him as never before, precisely because of the Western sanctions. So anyway, the point of this video. The fact that Zelensky floated these uh, negotiation points, which are no negotiation points at all, signals that this war is going to be fought to the bitter end. And the bitter end at this time, and this is a realistic assessment, and it's going to hurt the feelings of a lot of people, but the realistic outcome of this conflict is that Russia will take all of eastern Ukraine and all of southern Ukraine. And the Ukraine that will remain will be a rump state. And it will stretch from Kiev and Poltava Oblast all the way to just shy of Lviv, the city in the west. Lviv will be taken over by the Poles. They are already signaling that they are going to take over that region of the country.
the, the ancient Galicia, which historically has been Polish. Because do keep in mind, where Poland is today, well, that parallelogram was essentially 200 kilometers further east. It was moved west during uh, the aftermath of the Second World War. The Poland that exists today is not actually the historical Poland. The Poland that is historical actually includes lands that are currently Belarusian and Ukrainian. And the Polish leadership wants those lands back. And now that they have the chance to get some of those lands back, Galicia, from the Ukraines, they're going to grab that opportunity. And so Ukrainian, Ukraine, rather, the Ukrainian nation is going to be decimated by a war that should have been over by now. And then the territory of Ukraine will be divided up among the other nations. The only people losing by not suing for peace are the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian nation. And, and this, is, this is the reality of relations between great nations. Great nations not in the sense that they are morally upright, but great in the sense that they are powerful. Ukraine, for all its great virtues, is not so powerful as its neighbors. It's as simple as that. And now it's going to be carved up. And this is a tragedy. And we should ask ourselves whether it was worth it. As far as I'm concerned, it was certainly not worth it. Th this tragedy of the partitioning of Ukraine, the breaking of the Ukraine nation, could have been avoided if there had been some common sense, if there had been actual care taken for the well-being of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian nation. But the Zelensky regime, puppets of the West, they did the West's bidding, and that caused the deaths of countless Ukrainians and the breakup of the Ukrainian nation. If anyone is to blame here, you can talk about the ambition of the Russians, the ambition of the Americans, the ambition of the Europeans, of the Poles, of the Hungarians even. You can talk about their ambitions, but ultimately, who was responsible for the deaths of all of these Ukrainian soldiers? Current estimates, realistic estimates that I have seen, say that at least 25,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed in this conflict, and an additional 3,000 civilians have been killed in this conflict. Who is to blame? The Zelensky regime. The Zelensky regime and all the people involved in that thuggish administration. Those people are to blame because for their own selfish desires, they sacrifice the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian nation so they get a, get a little bit more money. That's all. That's all they wanted.